internet trading mob is driving GameStop shares higher. This GameStop situation is the craziest I think I've ever seen. What the hell is happening with GameStop? Users of Reddit's Wall Street Bets Forum have helped bid that stock up massively this week. Some will make money, some will lose money, but that's just the way the markets always work. My children are asleep and I am back here because I need to know what the hell is happening with GameStop and the stock market and short squeezes and all of this weird stuff that is happening on the internet and the financial markets. So I am going to figure that out right now and you are gonna learn along with me. I think the first thing I need to do is buy stock in GameStop. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. Cause I don't fully understand this, but I feel like I need to be a part of it. So I'm gonna buy some shares and see what happens. GameStop short sellers lost $1.6 billion in a single day as Reddit traders rebelled against them. So they decided we're gonna fuck their whole system up just to boost GameStop. Yeah, stock. well just to see if they could. I'm deep in it right now. <laughs> I've been on a call with my, my buddy who's a finance guy. He is walking me through every single thing. I've also spent an insane amount of time on Investopedia. I'm getting this. I am understanding what the hell is happening here and it is pretty cool. Okay, here's what happened. To understand this, you have to understand Pokemon cards. <laughs> you don't have, I mean, let me explain. There's this concept in finance that is painfully hard to understand for us laymen outside of the black box of trading. You've heard it a million times. There's a whole movie about it that I love. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Somebody shorted 200 mil in mortgage bonds. That was just with Deutsche. Word is he had half the town. How much in total? 1.3 billion. And yet it's painfully hard to get your head around, but I think I've done it. And I'm gonna break it down with an analogy. So let's say it's 2001 and Pokemon cards are a thing, but they're not that valuable yet. And you go to your little brother and you say, let me borrow one of your cards. Let me borrow it. I'll borrow it for one year and I promise I will give it back to you. And your brother's like, okay, which one do you want? And you're like, I want Charizard. Okay, Charizard. It's like a dragon card. Okay, so you get Charizard. I'm not a Pokemon guy, but I know Charizard. You're borrowing this card from your brother for a year. It's not yours, but even still, you're able to go onto eBay and sell it. You sell it for $10, okay? So you just sold this Charizard card for $10. You just made $10, even though you didn't spend any money buying that card. But in the back of your mind, you know that you have to give a Charizard card back to your brother you promised you would. A year goes by and you go back onto eBay and one of two things will have happened by then. Remember you sold it for $10, but now a year later, the card could be worth $2. If it's worth $2 now, because it's like not that cool anymore, you're pretty excited. You buy one off eBay, you go back to your brother and you're like, here, here's your Charizard card. Your brother doesn't care how much you bought it for. You are making good on the deal by giving him back his card. You, on the other hand, are stoked because you borrowed that card for free. You went and sold it for $10 and then to replace it a year later, it was only $2. So that $8 is yours. You got that out of nowhere. Now, what would happen if it went the other way? You go onto eBay a year later to replace your brother's Charizard card and the price is now $100. It's 10 times and you're like, oh crap. You had sold it for $10, now it's worth 100. You have to cough up $90 of your own money out of your own pocket to pay for that, to make good on your promise, to return the card. This process happens every single day, right up the road in New York City, where hedge funds, which are big, giant aggregations of money that are managed by smart analysts who think about the economy all day, take bets. But instead of Pokemon cards, you can borrow someone's stock and go sell it with the promise that you will return that stock to them at some point in the future. If you have a suspicion that Charizard cards are gonna be worth less money in the future, then you'll probably go to your little brother and do this deal. It makes a lot of sense. You can make eight bucks if you know that Charizard cards are gonna be worth a lot less in the future. And this is what hedge funds do every single day in New York City. They look at companies that they think are gonna be worth less in the future. And they go to the shareholders of that company and they say, hey, let me borrow your stock for a second. I'm gonna go sell it. And I promise I'll give it back to you in the future. So let's talk about GameStop for a second. GameStop is a video game store. I actually went to one last week because we just got a Nintendo Switch. Like for the first time we have Nintendo in our home. I'm playing Zelda with my children. 
You ready to play Zelda? And I needed a controller, so I went to GameStop. It's the first time I've ever been inside of one of these places. GameStop is a retailer that is usually in a mall, a place you probably haven't been in a very long time, and especially during COVID-19. A lot of people up in New York City who spend their day thinking about the future of companies in our economy sort of saw GameStop as like, oh, they're doomed. Like, these people are gonna be out of business in like, no time. Or in other words, Oh, the Charizard card, that's gonna be worth nothing in a year. I'm gonna go to my little brother and see if I can borrow it from him so I can do a deal and make eight bucks off of this. And if you look at the value of a share of GameStop stock during 2020, you would see the omen. This place is doomed. It was like down at $4 a share. Sometimes it would bump up a little bit. This was a cheap stock. But again, go back to our little scenario here. It's a year after you borrowed and sold your brother's Charizard Pokemon card for $10. You pull up eBay, you search for the card, and now it's worth $100, or $200, or $1,000, and you start to panic. You have to buy that card and give it to your brother. You have to. Where the money comes from, that's up to you. This is exactly what happened a couple of weeks ago. Look at the stock. It's up more than 680% so far this year. Instead of this graph going down, this graph went up. So now we understand this concept of shorting a stock. That's, that's what it's called. When you think a, sh a stock is going to go down, you can take a short position on that stock and you can get a payout if it goes down. You smell that? What is that? What? What's that smell? A cologne? No. Opportunity. No. Money. Oh. But here's where it gets into unprecedented territory that gets at the heart of our financial system and what it even means. The reason this stock went up is because of a subreddit. This subreddit, Wall Street Bets, is full of people who are sort of like stock bros that like didn't make it to Wall Street and decided to become trolls on the internet. <laughs> It's a bunch of dudes, misogynistic as hell, who are crude, irreverent, and like foul-mouthed, but also incredibly good at trolling the hell out of hedge funds. These guys caught wind of the fact that all of these hedge funds were shorting GameStop, that were basically betting that it was gonna go down. They had borrowed and sold a lot of Charizard cards, hoping that it would be worth a dollar. So they decided to rally around GameStop and they started buying stock, tons of it, all together. And when you buy a lot of stock and there's a lot of demand, the price goes up. They realized that all of the institutional investors were hedging on GameStop, so they just bought a bunch of call options, bought a bunch of stock. I'm not saying they're working in concert. I'm not saying they're doing anything illegal. I am saying that they are in force. Soon this started to catch attention and people started to see this rally around GameStop, this random, like, totally, like, mediocre retailer and yet it was rallying in the stock market. And so more and more people started buying the stock and the price kept going up. And the hedge funds started to panic. Tuesday, the, the data's a little lagged, uh, was the worst day for this community on record. Because here's the thing about the Charizard card. You borrowed it from your brother and you sold it for $10. If you come back a year later and it's worth $100 and you have to front that $90 somehow to buy it and return it to your brother, you're panicking. If it's worth $500, you're panicking a lot more. If it's worth $1,000, you're panicking a lot more. And you can start to see where this goes. There's no ceiling. It could be worth $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, $100,000, $100, from ten to 100000 Then what? There is no ceiling. There is no end to the amount of losses that you can take when you short a position like this. They are being very specific to break yes. the shorts. So these hedge funds are looking at this graph just tick up. This stock that was worth $4 a share for the majority of this year suddenly was worth 40 and then 60 and then 100 and then 200 and then 300 and 400 and then it hit an all time high of $469 per share, more than a hundred times what it was during most of 2020. These hedge funds are dying. And meanwhile, the stock bros on Reddit are loving it. It's just this crazy moment of Reddit versus the hedge funds that I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. And here we are.
Good evening, newly minted Reddit millionaires. I'm sure all of you are watching this from the marble bathtubs on your hovercraft. So this is one hedge fund in New York in particular called Melvin Capital. They are the most screwed out of everyone. They had borrowed a ton of Charizard cards and now had to pay them back. So just like recently, like like last week, Melvin Capital is in like deep crisis. They're selling off all of their like long-term positions, the thing that they the things that they want to succeed in the long run to like cover this and then they're like going out and begging for money. And luckily, all these hedge fund people are really connected and they all know each other and they're all buds and 3 billion dollars worth of capital just comes down from the heavens like manna and keeps them afloat barely. So Melvin Capital's freaking out. They get their $3 billion savior fund that comes in. And then today, the day I'm filming this, it's Friday. You're probably watching this on Monday, I don't know. Today, Robinhood, which is the app that allows you to trade really easily and is what probably a lot of these uh, Reddit bros are using to make all of these trades. Robinhood freezes trading on GameStop and several other stocks that were following in this trend of like companies that were failing that a lot of hedge funds had shorted on and were now being rallied behind because of freaking Reddit. These are called meme stocks. They aren't being rallied because the company's doing well. They're being rallied as a sort of FU to hedge funds who have shorted their position on these stocks. This is unprecedented for a trading platform to just halt trading in the name of what? A lot of people are wondering, why did Robinhood stop this? Isn't this the free market? Well, remember Melvin Capital, the hedge fund that was most screwed over by this situation? Melvin was rescued in the end. They didn't go under, in part with a lot of money from another fund called Citadel. Citadel is also a major customer of Robinhood, providing up to 35% of their revenue in some years, according to tax forms. I want you to address the obvious. This looks like a move by an outfit called Robin Hood, which is supposed to be taken from the rich and given to the poor and doing exactly the opposite. That when the big guys, including one of your main investors in your company, started to lose, you shut down the game to starve the little guy. Soon you have members of Congress calling for an investigation. This is why we need an SEC that has clear rules about market manipulation. And take a guess on what you think the guys on Reddit are going to do. Do you think they're going to back down and be like, oh yeah, Robin Hood stopped us from trading. We're probably going to stop doing this. No, 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 no. Ooh, you just poured fuel on the fire. We don't have all the facts here. This is like fresh and unfolding and soon we may know. But the fact is that there is a very tight knit web among all of these financial people in New York City that look out for one another. And when a mob of angry Reddit people show up to completely screw up their system and their bets, it's not actually that surprising to think that they would band together and stop it. There will probably be an investigation into this, and if you're watching this anytime in the future beyond the next couple of weeks from when it was published, there will probably be a lot more information, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. Overall, this is a crazy thing that is happening, not only because it's like an amazing spectacle, but because it helps reveal the craziness of our financial system. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's crazy, meaning it's literally mental. It is literally mass psychology. How we value something and the price we put on it, whether it is a Pokemon card or a share in GameStop, is 100% a result of how a group of people decide to act towards it, to think about it. That is how our entire financial system is modeled. Value is based on what a bunch of people think value is. Just like a dollar bill, a piece of paper is only valuable because we all sort of believe it's valuable. We all take this for granted. It's like the air we breathe. It's become totally status quo to think of value and economics and financials in these terms. And yet a moment like this, when it gets disrupted, when those forces disrupt the status quo, it starts to become a little bit crazy to think of it in these terms. It almost takes the curtain away a little bit and shows us what our financial system really is built off of, which is mass psychology.
So I bought some shares of GameStop and <laughs> whether it wins or loses in the next few days, I'm just excited to be a part of this ride. This is crazy. All right, that's it. There's no sponsor for today's video because I just made it really quickly. I guess I'll just make a plug for my Patreon. Go follow me on Patreon, help support my videos. Okay, bye.